Hello again. This video started out as a nice, simple project. But things got out of hand. Grab your apple pie glue stick. Or your favorite glue flavor. Because we're making a big bird. This is pretty big, but is it big enough? Now we're talking. Sorry, Chen Zhao Terrace. We're doing Chao Yango Terrace. The paper model I started with had four rods. On the big one, I want to add an additional pair of rods to animate the wing tips. Now let's get cutting. This is some cardboard that I salvaged from Home Depot. I'm going to use this steaming hot glue gun on this cardboard hinge to connect the wing segments. Now the wings can fold like this. Same thing for the larger panel. And two more hinges for the body. It's getting bigger. Now we can make it three-dimensional with some cardboard ribs. Cover those up, and this piece will turn into the tail after we give it a little pinch. Tail. That's the top. Now the underside will need some strong pectoral muscles to flap those wings. Now I need to transition from the muscles into the neck. I don't really know what I'm doing here. We need a long neck. And the comically large head. But he's in good company. Goodbye, two-dimensional beak. We've got a three-dimensional beak. Like that. Sorry about that. Can't forget the upper beak. When you don't know what to do, just glue layers together. Now this will be our face shape. I made this smaller template to mark out scoring lines. That's where I'll cut the back of the panel, so that when I bend it, it bends where I want it to. That actually worked. This gets glued onto some cardboard supports, and the top of the head gets glued flat. There's a little gap in elevation here, perfect for this beak detail. This piece just needs a little twist. Perfect. More perfect. I'm using little pieces like this for support, but they'll get covered up later. It's working so far. This piece needs to be flush. So I'm cutting the edge at an angle like that. And here's where it goes. On the throat. This is a funny piece I'm bending a curve into. And that goes right there. Next, I'm going to use this paper bag to cover some seams and gaps. All of these unsightly seams need to get covered as well. For the eyes, I'm going to form this piece of paper around the socket. Now that it's formed, I can just trim off the excess.
I'm using paperboard from a cereal box to create the eyeball and eyelids. The body and head are now complete. Back to the wings for a moment. I'm gonna make the arms by curving these 2D cutouts. But they don't look like arms. Oh, I see. Now we need some hands. There we go. Now we can walk and hold stuff. This is how the hands should sit with the palms facing outwards. Now I need to do it all again for the underside. Now all the hinges are sandwiched between a top and a bottom wing panel. The cardboard sculpting is complete. Now we gotta make it fly. Let's start by adding some mounting hardware. I'm using brass machine screws with a nut and some tiny universal joints I found on Amazon. This will allow the rods to pivot in any direction. Now for the crankshaft. This is what will create the animated effect. After doing math, I'm ready to cut the pipe. Nice. These elbows will provide all of my right angles. Back to the hot glue to build a mounting point. We need this to hold the majority of the weight. I had to do some surgery here. Hot glue solves all my problems. He's ready to fly, but it's not time yet. We need to build the base. Now I have a template to trace out three more of these. The crankshaft will go in this hole, and these holes are for dowels. And that gets routed to give it nice round edges. I designed it so that everything comes apart, for transportation and storage. Normally you would solder copper pipe, but that would prevent me from making any adjustments. So I'm gonna try this copper glue, which works pretty well when they're not moving. The next step is to attach the rods. I looked everywhere to find the right fitting, but I couldn't find anything that would work. So I had to design my own. Here's what it looks like. Duplicate it for a full tube, and a second piece holds the rod. Now the rod can move from side to side, while these two wings prevent it from moving too far. For the center rod, I'm using a pipe to hold all that weight. I'm using a 3 quarter inch T with some 3D printed bushings to fit over the half inch pipe. And a screw so it can be disassembled. The center pipe's holding the weight well, but the brass rods don't. Let's try 3 16 steel. It moves. But not great. The wingtips are bending too dramatically, so I'm going to shorten them and change the angle. Now that the mechanism is mostly worked out, I can go back to finishing the bird. Let's start by beautifying the stand. So we're gonna take the marshmallow and we're just gonna dip it down 
let as much excess chocolate come off. These copper pipes tarnished as soon as I looked at them. Google said to use citric acid and dish soap, so that's what I'm gonna try. Oh, there it is. It actually works. A bit pinker than I expected. After rinsing them, I sprayed them with a coat of clear lacquer. I was thinking about not painting it, but then my next door neighbor bullied me into it. So let's spray paint. Base coat. Now let's switch to acrylic craft paint. Some brown. That's disgusting. Black. And water. I'm using colors based on a real animal. But I made up the pattern on the wings. Now that the messy base colors are down, I'm going to finish painting indoors. And give them a bigger crest. Let's start with some acrylic markers. The animal I'm referencing is a duck, called a spectacled eider. I assume because of its spectacled look. Time to break out a big brush for the beak. And let's whip up just the right green. I'm gonna call it Spectacled Eider Green. Or Mold Green. I wanna keep this paint job fairly stylized with clean lines. I'm using two additional colors to create a warm gradient, as well as shading. The eider's eyes are beautiful blue. Some finishing touches. And that open mouth is panting for a tongue. Made from a frozen pizza box. The head is finished. Now let's bring some of that eider green to the wings. I'm mixing that with cream and white to create a nice gradient. Here it is, taking up all my space, and his little brother. I added a feathery pattern to the body and arms, now we can seal it all in. These are some cores from a dog bag roll, with some masking taped dowels to fit inside. Those mechanics weren't entirely ironed out. This wing shape is not working. Part of the problem is this nice diving motion is causing the body to travel too far away from the wings. I had wanted to make this bend shorter, but the height of the elbows prevented that. What if there were no elbows? I could just bolt them together. I've also added 56 screws. It's working, but this pipe is bouncing. Let's check the animation. It's looking a lot better, but this joint's still too snappy, and the whole thing bounces. This design just wasn't made to handle so much weight. I added this spacer here to prevent the hinge from closing too far. And I closed this gap so the copper pipe can't bounce forward. Okay, we're finally ready to fly. Wow, that was a lot trickier than the paper version. This video is going to have a part two. We'll start from the beginning with a prototype.
to a template, to a working model, and then re-engineered into a kit with laser cut and 3D printed parts. If you'd like to get the kit early, there might be a few on my Etsy shop. Or you can download the template for free, and I'll show you how to make it from scratch. Okay, see you in the next one.